Hey guys, welcome back. And on today's video, I'm going to be unboxing, testing, and reviewing the Harbor Freight Daytona 4-ton heavy-duty floor jack. Now this one happens to be, uh, it's got the dual piston rapid pump design, and I'll show you about that in just a little bit. The reason that I'm doing this is because I'm replacing the Michelin, blue Michelin floor jack. It's a three and a half ton that I have had for, gosh, probably over 15 years. I need to replace or repair the cylinder. Uh, I'll show you what that does a little bit later, but it's, um, it's failing and that's gonna be a project for probably the winter. Now this one right here, this jack has a 20 and 5 16 maximum lift height and it's got a minimum lift height of around four and one eighth. And we're gonna open this, we're gonna unbox it, I'm gonna show you what it is. This thing is extremely heavy. In fact, I believe it weighs a little more than 100 pounds. So let's get to that and we'll see what we got in the box. All right, so thank goodness that they put some handles, actually four little handles in the cardboard to assist with lifting this up because, as I said before, this jack is heavy. All right. So when you first open this, you're going to get an owner's manual right here, which we'll go over. It's got some heavy duty handles. Now, one of the things that I like about these handles, number one, is it's got a foam grip or a foam pad, I should say, that's closest to the jack. And this will help if you're near like the front near an air dam or on the side, so you won't mar the car up or truck if you accidentally contact the handle to the vehicle. And it's got a spring, a heavy duty spring um, detent right here. And the way you put that together is you just press the detent and it goes in and it's ready to go just like that. All right, so there it is in all its glory. Let's get this out of the box and show you some of the features of it. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove this. This is a uh, like a rubber or plastic shipping clip. And it's very important to make sure that you just don't pull this out. You're gonna use some pliers when you do this, or channel locks, but you wanna make sure that You've got this handle in here and you hold down there's a little bit of pressure you want to hold it down and then pop this out like that if i didn't have this handle in here this piece right here would snap up like that and you could pinch yourself um, this is just like a rubber or plastic block all right so the next step is we need to Rotate this plate right here up because we need to check the oil level in the cylinder, adjust if necessary, and we're gonna bleed any air. There are actually four Phillips screws that hold this plate on. We just need to remove these two right here so we can swing the plate up. You don't have to remove it. Swing it back like that. And I'll reposition the camera so you can see the cylinder and the port where we're gonna add and bleed the, the uh, hydraulic fluid. All right, so you will see right here, you're gonna use a flat bladed screwdriver and I'm going to remove this screw here. This is the lifting cylinder. And what we're looking for is we're looking to see if there's any fluid should just be above the top of the cylinder and there is none there. So we are gonna to have to add some. 
So we'll do that next. I want to show you real quick in the manual. There is a diagram that shows where the level should be. So it's, it's very easy when you see that. All right, so in the manual, it tells you to use a 22 viscosity fluid. You can probably see this pretty good, but I'm going to uh, just put a little bit in there. Sorry if my hand's in the way. Make sure to only use hydraulic jack fluid. Okay, so I can, if I move the jack around, hopefully the camera's picking that up, you can see that the level of the fluid is now just over the top of the, uh, the cylinder in there. So the next procedure that we're going to do is we're going to bleed the air out of the cylinder itself and I'll show you how to do that next. All right, so according to the directions, you just take the handle and you pump it up and down 10 to 15 times. And I can see the fluid in there kind of circulating. And let me set you guys up so you can see what uh, it's going to look like when you do it. I did forget to mention that the, obviously if you turn the handle all the way in, clockwise, the uh, jack would raise up, and you wanna make sure that it needs to be turned out counterclockwise so that it, uh, the jack does not lift. Okay, that should be sufficient. Then we're going to take our plug. There is a tiny O-ring near the head of it. Okay, just put this snug to the bottoms. Wipe off any excess. And you should be good to go. One thing that I did not tell you guys is on the end of this, it's, um, it's in the shape of a square. And if you look down there, you'll see that it is also in the shape of a square. And what this does, this turns the little U-joint that opens and closes the relief valve. And this screw right here, or this bolt, is what you're going to just screw in like that. Okay, just needs to be like that just so this won't come out and then when you turn this clockwise it will tighten the shutoff valve which allows the jack to lift up when you turn it counterclockwise it releases the pressure and causes it to uh, fall down and we'll go over that next so real quick the first thing i'm going to do since our bleeding procedure is done We've got the level up to where it needs to be in the cylinder. I'm going to go ahead and put these two Phillips screws that we removed back in. Okay. Now, when you turn the handle clockwise, you close the valve and you will activate the lifting. We'll go all the way up so I can show you. Very, very smooth action. All right, so that's as high as it goes. You want to release it, let it down. You turn it counterclockwise, and it releases the pressure. Very easy. So before we actually do a test, I'm going to go over some of the points on this jack that I think are notable. All right, so... A couple things I wanted to show you guys that this is a really, really heavy duty welded unit. 
It's very heavy. This, in the manual, it says this thing weighs 102 pounds, and let me tell you, it feels like all that and more. It's got swivel castles, casters on the back, and these are some type of uh, metal or cast iron wheels. It's got a heavy-duty C-channel frame that uh, it goes down to, uh, I guess it's about four, four and an eighth to this pad right here. This pad has a rubber insert. It is metal. It does spin 360 degrees. You've got a grease point here. This is the main uh, fulcrum for the arm. And up front, we've got some really, really heavy duty. Um, these are either steel or cast iron wheels. It's very, very easy to move around. You don't feel the weight at all while it's rolling. But it is um, it's quite a heavy duty piece of equipment. This has a knurled handle, so if your hands are slightly greasy or wet or whatever from working outside, you've got a little grip here. And of course you've got your foam tube that's over the handle itself. It's got the Daytona on there. And yeah, this is, uh, this is very heavy duty floor jack. Let me get the Michelin out just for comparison and let me show you what a three and a half ton looks like next to it. All right, so here's my Michelin jack and the jack works fine. This is also a speedy lift. It works fine when there's no load on it. So it'll go up that high. In comparison, the Daytona does not go up quite as fast when it does not have a load, but it's much faster than if it didn't have the two-stage piston. So my Michelin goes up just a tad higher, not much. This is a very heavy-duty jack. I've been very pleased with it. I'm going to rebuild the cylinder, like I said, and I'll get it back into working shape. You cannot have too many floor jacks. Of course, this operates the same way. Twist that, it goes down. This jack has lifted up probably a thousand vehicles. It's about the same width. Uh, the weight, the Daytona feels just a slight bit heavier, but the construction's very similar. Um, now this, the Daytona, I can get under stuff a lot easier. So uh, back when I had the Jetta, it, very difficult to get this under the front end. I would have been able to get this under the front end. So, but yes, that will be a, uh, that will be a separate video. I will rebuild that cylinder and get it back to uh, working shape. All right. So, what would be uh, an unboxing without a test of the capabilities of this? So let's, uh, let's get set up and see if it'll lift the front end of the Tundra off the ground. All right, so I can already tell how much easier this rolls on the driveway. So let me get it set. All right, see how that already is a good idea to have this rubber. It's actually, a, it looks, it's like a closed cell foam. Now I can already tell you that this jack is much easier to, um, to actually pump up than the Michelin ever was. This is half a ton more, but Yep, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Let's um, let's keep going. Let's 
So that's, <laughs> that's really higher than I would ever need to lift that. And we'll just turn it counterclockwise. It's very easy to turn when it's under load. And it goes right back down. All right, so that's, the Tundra front end is pretty heavy, but it's only got a four liter V6. Let's try something even heavier. No problem. There you go. All right. All right, so what are my conclusions? I really like this. It's very smooth. It rolls smooth. The casters are nice and smooth. The handle takes almost no effort to release the uh, pressure in the jack. It takes uh, very little effort to actually uh, lift whatever you're lifting up, at least on these two vehicles. This cylinder obviously is a little heavier duty than the one I've got in the Michelin, but yeah, I like it. I like the fact that it's a little bit lower profile and I think it's gonna be a very good addition to the shop. So the best thing is this thing was on sale. Now, these normally run for $239 and I got it on sale for $199. If you're if you're needing something that's a low profile, that has a long reach, they have, they have a bunch of three-ton jacks that have both of those specifications and features. I don't need that having two trucks and that's, that's even lower than my Michelin, so that's plenty fine. It would be nice if it would lift up a little higher, but I would rather have the extra half-ton capacity than the extra uh, lifting. So I really, really couldn't utilize that much around here. But anyway, it's got a very comprehensive manual. And uh, I'm, I gotta say, I'm very, I'm very pleased. This is, this is a quality jack. Time will tell how long it will last. The, the Michelin jack, you know, it's not made by Michelin. It's somebody, some other company makes it and puts their name on it. Of course, it's made in China. I would have preferred to have a USA made jack, but the problem is, that while this one was $199, a four ton good quality USA made like a Norco or something, they're $400 plus. So I can't really, unfortunately, justify more than double the cost. Uh, well, almost double the cost, but hopefully this will be fine. You can get rebuild kits for the, uh, for the cylinders. I mean, other than that, you know, you're not gonna have any, really not having, really any issues that I see. I've never, never damaged the Michelin. I've lifted, like I said, I've lifted up so, so many cars. It's, I've even put a 350 pound, pulled a 350 pound stump out of the ground with the Michelin. So anyway, I hope this review and test was helpful. If you're looking at it, uh, just go to Harbor Freight's website or just Google it. Um, you can find these on sale quite often and they have coupons and stuff. So Really, I'm very impressed with the jack, with the quality. So it's, it's, it's equal to, if not better than the Michelin that I've had for 15 years. So thank you very much for watching the video. If you've got one of these jacks or maybe a three ton one and um, you've had it for a long time, you just got it, just put your, uh, your testimony down in the, uh, the comments and I will talk to you guys on the next video.